our YouTube channel so um, everyone could maybe go back and refer to it at another time. And um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen. It's always takes a second. And um, I'd like to just say that I'm Patty Cox, and I am with the Montana PTAC located at the University of Montana. And um, for today's presentation, if you're just arriving, if you could please type your name and business name in the chat window. Uh, that way we can validate your attendance to this meeting. And I'm so glad to have you all here today. Um, I think we're gonna be able to learn a lot. And um, Carly is here. She's gonna help manage this chat and um, with the questions and answers. And if you um, have a question, just type it in the chat. That works great. Um, and um, I welcome everybody here and we'll, I think, how are we doing on the attendees? Maybe we should, I think we could maybe get started. Yeah, we're at 39 right now. Uh, okay. All right. Thank you. And so, um, so today, we're gonna talk about the PTAC first, and I'm at the Missoula PTAC located at the University of Montana. I'm part of the program at UM, which is the Outfacing Economic Development Programs um, called Accelerate Montana. And uh, we're here for you. We help a lot of businesses um, in uh, the Missoula area and also around the whole state with our various programs. And so if you want to find out more, you can find us on the Accelerate Montana webpage, um, which is part of UM's webpage. So a uh, great organization here um, that helps businesses. So the Montana PTAC provide, you know, some of you might not know what PTAC is. It stands for uh, Procurement Technical Assistance Center, and we provide no cost assistance to businesses as they explore the government marketplace. Uh, we have locations around the state of Montana and we're funded in part by a cooperative agreement with the Defense Logistics Agency and each of our centers has a, a host agency. Mine's the University of Montana, but around the state you'll find our PTAC counselors and Billings, Kalispell, Missoula, Great Falls, Hamilton, and Lewistown. Uh, when, when you think about PTAC, you, you might want to check out our website. You can find um, all our locations and the contact information for the PTAC counselors there, as well as the event listings and also timely news about the government topics that might um, be important to your business. We provide a variety of services such as uh, identifying opportunities and teaching you how to do the market research uh, to find out if government contracting is a good match for your business. We do networking events and have special industry days so you can get to know the agencies and learn um, how the government buys what you sell. We'll help review proposals and solicitations. So if you're putting a package together or bid uh, together, we help with that uh, and give you guidance. We also help with some technical assistance and getting um, you in the systems. You know, there's a lot of vendor registration systems and other um, government websites that you need to be aware of and be part of in order to be a successful uh, contractor. And we also help with some hands-on um, assistance with small business certifications. And that's what we're going to talk about today is the woman-owned small business uh, program. The woman-owned small business 
federal contract program <clears throat> um, is was started in 2011, and it the SBA programs they the SBA as a whole they set the contracting goals for um, agencies and the women-owned small business uh, contracting goal is five percent of all small businesses uh, for federal contracts. And agencies can meet the 5% goal by awarding contracts through this program. Um, the program allows contracting officers to set aside contracts for women-owned small businesses or economically disadvantaged women-owned small businesses that meet or fall under eligible NAICS codes. And NAICS stands for North American Industry Classification System code. Um, we're going to talk more about the NAICS um, a little bit later on in the presentation. Uh, and we'll uh, go on now here, tell a little bit about how the programs changed. So I'd like to tell the history. So this program started a while back, but in 2015, Congress updated the rules and those were finalized last May. Um, when that happened, uh, Prior to July 15th, 2020, uh, the SBA and the government allowed self-certification process for women-owned small businesses. And they also allowed um, certifications that came from approved third-party certifiers. Um, businesses were allowed to continue to self-certify until October of 2020. But now um, the new rules are in full force and the program has gone to a fully vetted certification process. Patty, um, there's a quick question. Um, someone would like to get the website from the, the previous slide. I think it might be two slides ago now. Oh, I can, I'll paste that in the chat. Yeah, that'd be great, thank you. And um, I'm also going to email the slideshow to all the participants that joined um, today. So you would be able to um, see those um, kind of any of the links and so on in that. So now I need to find the chat. Um, People have a link to your YouTube channel available. Um, I'll, um, yes, I can provide that. Let me... Um, it's hard to get to the chat right now. Let's see, what, let's see. I'm gonna pause the share and see if I can get to the chat. Bear with me. Oh, someone popped it in. Oh, thanks a lot. Yeah, sorry about that. that. <laughs> um, all right, so I, I apologize for that. I'm not a pro at Zoom. I, <laughs> you think after all these months of being off, off the grid in your own little living room working, you would um, have that all, all these things. Um, figured out. So, all right, let's, so let's go back. We're going to go back to here. And then um, if there's more things we need to add to the chat, we can get those in there. Um, the SBA um, did start a new program then um, this last summer to provide a free online certification uh, process for women-owned small business and e uh, economically disadvantaged women-owned small businesses, and that's at beta.certify.sba.gov. And the SBA um, is going to continue to allow businesses to utilize the approved third-party certifiers for the certification. And um, they are also including now um, firms that may have been certified by another um, government small business programs such as the SBA's 8A program 
or the VA's program for uh, veteran-owned businesses, just provided they meet the eligibility requirements uh, for the women-owned small business program as well. So um, we talked a little bit about the third-party certifiers and um, on the SBA site and linked here are the ones that are uh, qualified to do this certification for the SBA and they're approved. Um, but I'd like to note that all these certifiers do charge fees and it's both for the initial certification process and for annual renewals. Um, and then once you get a third party certification, then you can um, register at the SBA's site and up, it upload that certification. But um, PTAC is here because we can help you for no cost. And I just encourage people to kind of understand um, that these services, you know, it's not a, a really difficult process to get certified. You have to be, you know, attentive to detail and so on, but we're here to help you with the steps. So let's talk about the eligibility requirements. To be eligible for this program, you must be a small business, and that's based on the SBA's small business size standards. Be um, at least 51% owned and controlled by women who are US citizens, and have the women manage the day-to-day -day operations and make the long-term decisions for the business and be able to provide proof of ownership and control. To meet the requirements of the economically disadvantaged women-owned small business program, you would need to um, meet all the requirements of, you know, that we mentioned above, and then also each woman has to have a personal net worth less than $750,000 and an adjusted gross income over the last three years averaged of less than $350,000 and, um, and have less um, than $6 million in personal assets. And as you can tell, there's two components to this small business program. Women-owned small business, or WOSB, and economically disadvantaged women-owned small business, EDWOSB. For each designation, the SBA considers the unique NAICS codes that the business operates under, and then they'll also content, uh, consider the personal net worth um, for the economically disadvantaged women-owned small business program. So the SBA has identified specific industries that are underrepresented by women. These in industries are represented by the North American Industry Classification System Code or NAICS code and are applied to women-owned small business and economically disadvantaged women-owned small business set-asides. This means when the federal government wants to create a solicitation or an opportunity for WSBs or EDWSBs, they can only utilize those NAICS codes that are in the SBA's designated list. And it's important to note that all EWOSBs are also WOSBs. So if you qualify as an EWOSB, you are also considered a WOSB. And the designated NAICS code list can be found at the link at the SBA's um, federal contracting program site. So I'd like to explain what is a set aside. Um, if you're new to government contracting, you may not um, understand all the terms. So in order to level the playing field, the government limits com competition to certain contracts to small businesses. And those contracts are called small business set-asides. Um, they can help you. And so for this program, if you're a qualified woman-owned small business and you have the designated NAICS code, then you can bid on set aside opportunities. So you may wanna be thinking about what path to take. 
and how you would consider should you be an economically disadvantaged women-owned small business or a WSB? What I have found is that many of our Montana businesses do qualify for the financial criteria of the EDWSB program. And so if you qualify for it, it can be helpful because all EDWSBs are also women-owned small businesses. So um, you wanna learn what NAICS code does your business operate under and are they designated as EDWSB or WSB? So for example, if all your NAICS codes fall under WSB only, it may be just worth it to apply for WSB and not worry about doing the extra financial steps for the application to become an EDWSB. Um, then you wanna learn, do the business owners, the women owners, meet the financial criteria that's set forth for the eligibility of EDWSB? Because if they do, um, if you meet that criteria, but under, you know, only operate under woman-owned small business NAICS code, you can still apply for the EWOSB certification and be eligible for set-asides that are only assigned to the NAICS codes that are for WSBs. All right. I know that's a lot of acronyms. It wouldn't be government <laughs> contracting without acronyms, I'm telling you. <laughs> Quick question for you. On the yeah. income, um, if you're getting retirement pay, do you does that income include retirement pay? Or I, is, I, I believe it includes all your income. So it, it's based on, they, they evaluate your income and based on your taxes. So it, you know, you, in, when you're applying for EWSB, you have to provide documentation. So some of the documentation has to do with payroll and regular, you know, in work business, um, income, but also it's based on the information that's going to be on your tax forms, for both for business and personal. Did that answer your question? Yes. I mean, so if I have zero W-2s right now, because I'm in business startup, and, uh, and then I only have the 1099s for retirement pay. So right. But you do have to provide those. Oh. Okay. Um, both, yeah, both personal and business income. Um, Patty, there is one more question regarding uh, that subject. What if you are married and filing jointly? Um, so if you want to be um, considered in the EWOSB program, um, we're going to talk about this on a little bit later slide, but all the, um, all the firm's owners plus any um, spouses of the eligible women who are claiming economic disadvantage have to contribute information to the application process. So um, it, it, the SBA can consider the husband's income as well. And, um, but we'll go over that in maybe just a little bit here. So I wanna um, get back to like which path. So some, some businesses are not included in that NAICS code list, you know, some industries. So if, you're, if your business meets the eligibility criteria for woman-owned small business, but doesn't operate under one of, the, one of the set aside NAICS codes, you can still get certified. You're not prohibited from getting certified in the program. You know, an example might be that you may only simply want the designation of WOSB or EWOSB. You may work on projects or um, with other prime contractors where the certification is a requirement. Um, as an WOSB subcontractor, your certification can help prime contractors meet their diversity goals and their subcontracting goals. So. Um, your situation may not, um, may be a little bit different depending on what kind of work you're doing. However, if you get certified, but you're not in the eligible NAICS code areas, you can't bid on, um, 
opportunities that are specifically set aside for this program. So it always takes a little preparation to apply for any small business certification. And some of the prerequisites uh, include um, that you have to be registered in the System for Award Management or SAM. Um, PTAC can help you with those steps, as, you know, of course. And the SAM.gov is uh, entity registration is required for anyone that wants to bid on or perform on um, government, federal government contracts. To apply, you need to be able to provide the documentation that demonstrates that you're 51% owned, owned by women and controlled by women. Um, so, and also for the EDWSB, you have to document financial information and for the each woman owner and for the such spouse of the woman owner um, and, and provide details on your personal assets and liabilities. Um, we talked about this, so individual contributors through this application process, um, the woman business owner will complete most of the application process on her own but then she must invite individual contributors. And so that's everyone contributing to your firm must provide specific details before you can attest and submit your application. Um, and these can include all these categories. It could be board members, it could be the spouse or whether married or legally separated. Um, if you're gonna be, uh, applying for EW, EDWSB and um, uh, other firm owners. And the types of information that you would be providing would be um, uh, the resume information about uh, proof of citizenship and um, other details about those other contributors to your firm. So once you have gathered together everything that you need to do for the application, the application is at the new um, website called beta.certify.spa.gov. And there you can complete a short quiz to ensure you're eligible and, and also find all the preparation checklists and access the knowledge base and program guides for the program. And this, um, you know, in the old system before July of 2020, the self-certification website was just called certify.sba.gov. So don't get the two mixed up because they're completely separate. And this is the only place where you can certify for the Women Owned Small Business Program. So there's some tips. Um, the main one is remember your PTAC counselor is here to help provide guidance through all the steps. Um, your SAM registration needs to be complete and active before you apply. You have to have all your documentation in electronic format before you begin and it has to be um, correctly named. Um, just can't have like a blank name on it or a number of something that you scanned in. Um, once a document is uploaded to the web application, it cannot be deleted. So that's why preparing ahead of time is really important. So um, it's easier to complete the application. And when you get registered into the beta certify website, you'll need information from your SAM registration. You'll need your DUNS number, taxpayer ID, your MPIN, which is a password inside SAM, and the NAICS code. And everyone in your firm must provide their contribution details before you can submit your application. So I think when you're getting it all together, that's um, really important, some really important steps to um, just be really organized and thoughtful about the process and um, 
carefully read through the information that's available on the certified.sba website, but also um, PTAC counselors will provide you with handouts and information about what you have to gather together, how to prepare, um, how to you know, understand all the information regarding um, the financial information that you might need to gather together as well for the application process for the EDWSB. Patty, quick question. Um, this was sure. a slide from Molly. Um, could you please be more specific about controlled by women? I've experienced a prime representing themselves as women owned, but that was only an ownership. Their female spouse was not actually active in the business. Okay, that's a really good question. Um, so yes, the woman has to have 51% or more ownership, but she also has to manage the day-to-day -day operations of the business and make the long-term decisions. Typically the business owner, the woman, should have the highest um, position in the company. She doesn't have to have the special uh, certification. So for example, let's say it's an electrical contractor and the electrical con you know, the, the husband is the electrician, but the woman can still be a woman owned small business because she runs the daily operations. She signs the checks. She takes care of all the work for the company um, and signs contracts and so on. Um, the woman, Business owner, um, you know, when you're filling in the application, it's going to ask about outside employment, and that can be a mark against you if you have outside employment. You know, like you can't be running the electrician's business and then also um, be a real estate agent full time. Um, the SBA does evaluate that when they're going through the assessment. Did that answer your question, Molly? Um, it did. It, you know, again, I, I've, I've experienced something where it felt like serious misrepresentation on the part of the prime. Um, but I, as long as I know how to do it for myself, that's probably the most important thing. Right. I think there are some businesses that kind of... Um, didn't really use the program correctly, especially during all the years where everything was self-certifying. So there was no onus on um, the government to really verify all those details. And I think that's why in the early days of this program, it wasn't uh, quite a successful program. I mean, I, that's my, his, you know, and understanding the history of this program, I guess that's my personal opinion, but I think because now it's a fully vetted program, I think there's gonna be more protections. And I also really like to point out is that the woman business owner who signs that application has to attest that everything she is saying is true with the risk of basically breaking the law. So there could be fines and, um, they say imprisonment if you misrepresent to the government. You know, it's not something to take lightly or just think that you, you know, and, and that's the same in many of these small business programs. They have very strict rules and they do uh, very strict vetting. So. Um, Patty, there are a couple of more questions. Would you like those now or would you like me to hold off? Sure. Let, we're almost to the end of the slide, so we can ask them now. Okay. If we submitted an application but didn't invite the contributors, can we go back and fix then resubmit? Um, if, well, you know, there's a lot about the process of the application um, analysis that is not always super um, clear to those that are outside the system because it's a brand new um, program and a brand new um, web application. But I, if, you, if you didn't submit them and you were, did get the final, got to the final page where it said attest and submit and submitted it, then you're, 
it's in the system and I don't think you can edit it. Um, you could email the SBA and say, and ask them to take it out of the system possibly and start over. Um, you may get a question via email um, if you provide a documentation, like let's say you provided documentation and it shows that you're only 51% owned through your stock certificates or other documentation that you provided, they may have a question about that. Um, and so after you submit, they would be sending you questions via email. Um, but you can, um, you can also log into your profile and see if there's any um, questions in there. And you can also send an email via your portal, your own personal portal there to the SBA. Um, I don't know the full answer to that question because I, but I'm really feel pretty confident that once you submit it, it's in the system and you can't make changes. Um, and then I guess this slide's pretty, um, this just talks about how long it can take. Um, once you submit, then it can take 90 days typically for the SBA to approve or deny your um, application. Um, it can take longer. I've had businesses that got started this summer on the process and uh, maybe in August and September and still haven't got the definitive yes or no yet. So, I mean, just know that this is a new system and so it can take a little bit longer than anticipated, I think, in these early months of it being established. And then again, the as it's being reviewed, you can receive requests from the SBA for additional information. So they, they oh, go ahead. There was one more question. Um, I think this is a, an important question. Do businesses that were previously certified by the self-certified method have to recertify after October, 2020? Yes. Um, they start in the brand new system and the information that was stored in the old S, uh, certified.sba.gov in that repository, remember you had to upload documents there um, to do the self-certification, um, those are not accessible. Um, they actually, um, that system doesn't apply anymore, doesn't apply to any contracts after October 15th. And so, you do have to start um, a new application. And it, it is a bit, it, it's a bit different. Some of the questions are the same, um, but it is a bit different. And um, I like to explain that it, once you get in there and get going, um, and this, you, you do have to upload documents as you go or you can't move forward. So that's why the pre-prep and having your organized files is really helpful. And then also you, and the other one positive is that you don't have to finish it all in one sitting. It can take a while to complete all the sections, especially if you're gonna do the EDWSB, it has more, um, more tables in there to complete. And so uh, definitely um, know that it'll feel a little bit different than the old system. So if you are declined, um, if you don't receive a letter of approval and are declined, you're, um, you may reapply after 90 days if you've corrected the problem. Um, there's no way to appeal the process. Um, some of you may be familiar with other small business certification programs like the VA's program allows some uh, appeals and different steps you can do to correct um, before denied, but not this program. Um, and then the SBA will integrate that information into your SAM profile. Basically, um, like some other of the small business program uh, programs, they 
they have a section in the SBA's dynamic small business search, which will indicate um, the date that you were certified um, for which program you were certified. And uh, so in the past, the contracting officers used to have to request information from you in the self-certification program, but that doesn't apply anymore. They'll be able to look it up. We have just a couple, we have a couple more questions that popped up Great. in the chat. Um, we will need to provide, will we need to provide tax returns for the year 2020 if we are trying to submit for the ED WOSB soon? It's the previous three years. So um, if you haven't done your taxes for 2020, um, you don't have to submit those. Great. And then um, another question, you may have already addressed this, but does PTAC offer a guide of what will be asked for as you, as what, of what will be asked of you as you move through the application system? You know, we have uh, some guides um, that we can provide to you that are available on the knowledge base at um, beta.certify.sba.gov. There are, a, there's like a quick start guide um, and then there's the full user guide. So they call it the external user guide. And that one is a full guide with screenshots that kind of has step-by-step -step, um, uh, help. And we can provide that to you. And also when, what I do with my clients, I, you know, every PTAC counselor may do it a little bit different, but once the uh, person's ready to apply, then we usually meet by Zoom and then they share their screen with me so we can read through the questions together and go through the steps. I think it's helpful to have two sets of eyes on these um, questions and help you get through it a little bit faster. Um, but, I, but I think it is all really doable. Okay. That's all the questions for now. All right, so the summary, um, you know, number one, check with PTAC and we are here to help. Um, you'll wanna identify and check on the eligibility of your NAICS code, uh, determine the path to the woman-owned small business or EDWSB, whichever is the best fit for your company. Um, make sure that your registration in SAM is there or up to date if you've had it already. Um, you wanna prepare the documentation and name your electronic files and have it all organized. And then um, you'll register and claim your business at the beta.certify.sba.gov. And then you'll read it carefully as you apply and go through the application. Um, it's, it's broken up into cards or tiles. And so each tile has a different section. You know, like the first one is about you and then the next one's about the ownership. And then there's the, you know, different ones that all the way up to the individual contributors. Um, you want to complete all the sections, and then at the end, you attest and submit the application. And so um, I think that's the end of the webinar today, but um, are, are there any other questions? Yeah, there, um, yeah, feel free to type here any more questions into the chat. There are a couple that did come up on that last slide, Patty. One okay. of them being, um, where can I find a list of documents needed for the EDWOSB so that I can prepare the documents before setting up a meeting with you, Patty? Um, you can um, send it, you can find that at the website um, at uh, SB, the uh, beta.certify.sba. And I'm gonna put that in the chat. And so when you go to that website, you'll go to where it says prepare on the top menu. And then, um, uh, then it gives you a list of everything. Uh, PTAC can also email you a copy of that list. So you don't have to just scroll through the, the online version.
Um, are there any additional questions or anything else you might have for uh, PTAC? There's one more here. Um, will we need to provide 1099s for unemployment claims if we had them in the past three years? Um, I don't know the answer to that one, Tiffany, I'll look it up. And I, I'll get back to you on that one. I, I think, I, I don't know if they consider unemployment income, but I just don't know. Um, any of the other PTAC counselors out there, do you know that? Okay, it's silence. <laughs> well, this is John with the Hamilton PTAC. Uh, I doubt that it would, you know, be an amount of money that would put you over any of the thresholds for an EDWSB. Um, so, anyway, that's just. I, I I'd imagine that you, you know you're providing your econ, your uh, tax return, so it'll probably be a, if it's listed on there, it'll be listed. Yeah, I agree, John. I think that it's probably better to gather up more information than less, so that you can either um, sometimes even in these systems, um, there you need to provide a letter of explanation. So, like, let's say. You're a person. You're you didn't have a tax return for a certain year because you didn't work, or you know maybe only your spouse worked or something like that for your family. There was some change with your family. You might have to provide a letter of explanation as to why you're not providing a tax return for that year. So um, whatever information that you do gather, you can um, review that with the PTAC counselor and um, we would go over um, the details and just try to make sure that you had enough information in your application so you don't get disqualified. Um, there's another question from Wendy. Would you review individual contributors? Oh yeah, we, I would help you with, with all the steps and that's a part of the process. And so, um, you know, there are um, definitely uh, federal, um, federal acquisition regulations and um, codes that apply to this program. And so a PTAC counselor can help review and make sense if, if, you're, if you're not sure about anything with the program, we can help you with that. So. Um, yeah, everyone that needs to provide information, we can assist you with that. Another question just popped up from Jordan. Um, if I have 51% shares, but my husband and I equally share the workload, would that disqual me, would disqualify me from being a WOSB? Um, I think um, one of the things that the government looks like looks at is your resume. And so if your resume shows that you are running the daily operations and maybe your, I mean, obviously every, you know, your husband might, you might have the technical certification to do the job. Maybe you're the engineer of the company. And then your husband is, does other components of the work of your business. Then, it, it balances out, I think, if you are running the daily operations and you can show that you're the one that is there every day. Um, if you're only working for the business part-time or have outside employment, that's a full-time commitment. Um, you, you, that would be one area where it might raise a red flag. But I think, you know, if you're sharing the workload that's fine. I think you just, it's just illustrated in the resumes for you and the ind individual contributors. Did that help? Yes, thank you. Okay. Anything else popping up? 
people are you um, one more reminder um if you haven't already please drop your name and business name in the chat so we can track participants i really appreciate everybody joining and being part of this webinar we will um let me uh, grab the YouTube channel really quick, the web um, address for that, and put that in there. Across the landscape of Montana. And then um, when I, I'm going to send a, a uh, I'm going to send out a evaluation form for this webinar. And if you can fill it out, it's just a few questions um, that you fill out online. And then um, I also will email you separately, most likely, um, the, um, PDF of the slides, so you have all that. Are there any other questions before we finish up? Get uh, get to go to lunch early today. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining, and thanks, Carly, and um, all the PTAC uh, participants that joined in to appreciate you being here today, and. Um, uh, I hope you guys have a rest, a great rest of the day and can get out in that sunshine, and take a walk. So have a great, wonderful day. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. Uh, okay. okay.